The Diary of Samuel Pepys, read by Leighton Pugh. Lord's Day. Up and at my chamber all the morning and the office, doing business and also reading a little of L'Ecole des Filles, which is a mighty lewd book, but yet not amiss for a sober man once to read over to inform himself in the villainy of the world. At noon, home to dinner, where by appointment Mr. Pelling came, and with him three friends, Wallington that sings the good bass, and one Rogers, and a gentleman, a young man... His Pepys name came from a relatively simple background. Well his father was a tailor, and he rose through his own abilities to become an administrator of the English Navy. He personally witnessed some of the major events of his time. He was on the boat when Charles II returned from exile to be crowned. He was in London during the, the plague and the Great Fire of London. He thought his eyesight was failing and in 1669, with some regret, stopped writing his diary. In the event, his sight wasn't impaired. Nevertheless, it remains a remarkable document and one of the most vivid and personal portraits of the 17th century we have. After dinner, we into our dining room and there to singing all the afternoon. By the way, I must remember that Peg Penn was brought to bed yesterday of a girl and among other things, if I have not already set it down, that hardly ever was remembered such a season for the smallpox as these last two months have been, people being seen all up and down the streets newly come out after the smallpox. But though they sang fine things... Samuel Pepys himself led such a rich no life. He was an extremely capable man, a member of the Royal Society, and therefore very much in the forefront of the new science of the day. Yet, he also loved the theatre, loved playing his musical instruments, and to the end of the diary remained a man of lively curiosity and energy, which remains apparent in all aspects of his life. <laughs>